Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Veterans Day is a very special occasion, and we are here to honor the service of our U.S. military veterans and their families. As the principal of Farmersville High School, it's my honor to welcome our local veterans and their families, along with other esteemed members of the community. It is my hope that today our local heroes will feel a sense of appreciation for their sacrifice. I also hope that our students will engage with this program in a meaningful way. Students, I'm speaking to you. You are accountable to one another, to your farmer brothers and sisters, and to this community. Please listen and watch intently throughout this program and connect with something larger than yourselves at a much deeper level. Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day and is celebrated every year on November 11th. Why November 11th? Well, the armistice ending World War I came on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. The date was declared a national holiday in all allied countries in 1919. After World War II, Congress changed the name from Armistice Day to Veterans Day to honor U.S. military veterans of all wars. We have a number of U.S. military veterans here with us today, and you have served in the U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. To begin today's ceremony, I ask our FHS students and staff to stand up at this time where you are at. Please stand up, students. In a moment, I will ask our veterans to also stand and turn to face you, and I want you, the students, to think about how all of the people you, have, you see before you have taken up a weapon and have prepared themselves to defend this country and your freedom even to the point of potential sacrifice of their own lives. Do you know of anyone who would trade their life for yours? They're right here in your presence. When they stand and face you, it's my hope that you will applaud and cheer for someone who has literally been willing to trade their lives for your own. And this is a cheer that's much greater than scoring a touchdown at the homecoming game or celebrating a playoff victory or in a pep rally but this is a cheer for love of country and for those who defend it. I'll prompt you in a moment. Veterans and families of veterans, in a moment I will ask you to rise and face the students of FHS. This is our future. This is the best our community has to offer, and they are the reason why you have sacrificed. The students are an unfinished product, still growing and learning from your example, but dedicated to supporting one another to achieve to the best of their ability and to carry the torch of freedom you have secured for us to this point in time. Veterans and your families, if able, please stand and face our students as they show their appreciation for you. Students, let's hear it for these heroes. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. At this time, please turn and face the United States flag, hand over your heart, and we will say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. At this time, it is my privilege to introduce the pride and thrill of Farmersville, the Farmersville High School Band, who will perform the Washington Post March, followed by Let Freedom Ring.
Good morning. My name's Coach Blassingame, and uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming out today. This is a wonderful event. Uh, it is an honor to be standing here in front of this school, the staff, uh, the faculty, the administration, uh, these students, and most importantly, these veterans and their families. At this time, I would like to introduce the Farmersville Choir, who will be singing the Armed Services Melody. If you are a veteran or a family member of a veteran and can stand, uh, please do so during your section of the medley. And at the conclusion, would everybody please stand as they finish this off with the national anthem. Thank you and enjoy.
Let's hear it one more time for the band and the choir. It is my honor today to introduce our featured speaker. Our speaker today is retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Charlie Tucker. Colonel Tucker and his wife Suzanne have been married for 55 years and they have lived in Farmersville for the past 21 years. Colonel Tucker graduated from the University of Texas in Austin and holds a master's degree from the American University in Washington, D.C. During his Air Force career, his family moved 19 times. His two daughters attended nine different schools. They graduated from high school in Japan and went on to receive degrees from Baylor University. Of the Tucker's five grandchildren, three are Baylor graduates and one is a student at UNT after two years as a Kilgore Rangerette. During his Air Force career, Colonel Tucker flew 11 different Air Force airplanes as well as the Goodyear blimp. His military career spanned 30 years with assignments in all 50 states and 13 foreign nations, including Vietnam, Thailand, the Republic of the Philippines, and four years in Tokyo, Japan. He also had two assignments in Honolulu, Hawaii. In the late 1980s, Colonel Tucker was selected by President George W. Bush to be the senior American officer to repatriate the remains of 12 American military members who died in captivity as prisoners of war in Hanoi, North Vietnam. In his last assignment, he was the director of Air Force Advertising, where he commanded 2,000 media specialists and managed a $52 million advertising budget. At his retirement, Colonel Tucker was awarded the Legion of Merit, our nation's fourth highest military decoration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colonel Charlie Tucker. I think it was General Douglas MacArthur who said, old soldiers never die, they just fade away. Sometimes I feel like I'm fading away very quickly, but as I do, I grow more and more appreciative of events and opportunities like this, and, uh, and I'm so grateful for you, and I know I speak for all of our veterans today when I say thank you for this time of honoring us. Yesterday I was at the Farmersville Post Office. I happened to comment to someone that I would be speaking at the high school today, they said, oh, we didn't know they were having a Memorial Day service over there. I said, well, I, I, this is not Memorial Day, this is Veterans Day, and I went on to explain to them that Mador, Menor, Memorial Day every year is observed the last day of May to honor men and women who have fought and died while serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. And today, Veterans Day, is the day that our government has set aside to honor all of us who are veterans of military service. Not just those of us from World War I or World War II or the Korean conflict or Vietnam or the Iraq conflict or even those of us who served in peacetime service. Actually, as I've gone back and looked at the statistics in those first four wars, World War One and Two and Korea and Vietnam, there are just not a lot of us veterans still living. But this is a day that our government has set aside to say to you and to me and to our federal, my, my fellow veterans, thank you for your service, thank you for your heroism and your sacrifice, and I personally want to add to that that my thanks go to the reservists and to the guardsmen who serve our nation also. My own military career began back in 1967. That was a long time before any of you sitting in the bleachers were even uh, thoughts in your mother or your father's hearts at that time. But um, 
At that time, in the mid-60s, our country was deeply involved in a very unpopular war in Southeast Asia, and there was a, there was a different attitude toward military service back then. It was a hostile time because many men didn't want to be drafted into the military. But at the same time, there was an attitude in our country that says you still, that we still owed an obligation to serve our country. And I remember after spending my year in Southeast Asia, after a long flight home, we landed back in California, and a, and a sergeant came on board the airplane, and he didn't welcome us home. He simply told us that if we were going to be traveling on past Travis Air Force Base, that we needed to change out of our uniform and put on civilian clothes because he said, most of the people that you are going to encounter on your way home will not appreciate where you have been or what you, have, or what you did there. And so I came home and in the middle of the night, landing at DFW Airport, and to kind of give you an indication of what time in history that was, that airport had only been dedicated and had only been open for one week at that time. But when I arrived there in the middle of the night, my wife Suzanne and our two daughters were there to greet me. And after she told me she loved me, she said, welcome home, hero. America appreciates your service. And it would be almost three years after that until someone would say to me that they appreciated the sacrifice that I had made being away from my family and the sacrifice that they had made allowing me to go. So I speak to my fellow veterans, and I want to say to you, our service has not yet ended. Our memories will always be there. And being a veteran means coming to terms with your military experience. It's a process that counselors call recovering. Because being a veteran is like speaking a different language or having a different frame of mind about world events. And as a result, I find that many veterans just don't want to talk about their time in uniform because it's hard to explain what military service is all about. There are things that I could not say that you would understand because you weren't there. Because most of you have never looked down the barrel of an AK-47 rifle wielded by a Viet Cong soldier who had one purpose in life, and that was to kill you. Most of you have not had the experience of sitting in the cockpit of an F-16 aircraft calling, Mayday, 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 because the engine just flamed out and all of your efforts to try to get it to start were not working at 35,000 feet above South Korea. But there is a unique bond among brothers and sisters in arms and like those sitting here in the front section in the first few rows, men and women who have been separated from their families, men and women who have lived in foreign countries, men and women who have walked in harm's way. And any time I meet a veteran, there's a unique bond that even spans the generations. And when people learn that I was in the Air Force for nearly half my life, they typically say, thank you for your service. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm about to say or get me wrong, because I think the term thank you for your service is great, and I sincerely appreciate it. And I say that to all of you veterans who are gathered here today, those of you who have served. But I don't think most people who have not worn a military uniform understand the challenges and the sacrifices and the costs that go with military service. It's true, a man or a woman who wears the uniform and for their families and for their loved ones, there is a challenge. And that's why this day, this gathering here at Farmersville, this ceremony is so significant and so appreciated 
by each and every one of us who is a veteran or who has been impacted by a loved one's military service. And so today is a day of a way of honoring the military, a way of showing respect for the sacrifices and the service that military members and veterans have made to America, are making to America today all over the world, and will continue to make all around the world. And for all of our medals and our ribbons and our ranks and the things that we veterans want, the most that we want is respect and recognition that we did our duty for our nation and for our families. And for each and every one of you gathered here today in this gymnasium, every young man, every young woman, I would have done my 30 years in the Air Force just for you. I would have done it in good times. I would have done it in bad times. I would have done it in times that were enjoyable, but I would have also done it in miserable times. And so you might say, thank you for your service. And that's really all of all, all us as veterans want to hear as a, a, an acknowledgement of our service. But in closing, I want to say in response to you, we did it for you. We did it for our nation. We did it for Farmersville. We did it for all the generations that are, will follow you in the coming, year, in that, coming years. And that's why America is so great. We fought for peace. We fight for peace. We fight for freedom for people of many nations. And that's because we believe in freedom for every person and we oppose governments that persecute its citizens. And with your de devotion and with your resolve, our national character will continue to make America the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And so today I say, may God bless each of you, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Tucker. We appreciate your service. We are so glad you found a home in Farmersville. And to you and your lovely bride, we do say welcome home. At this time, we have a video tribute. Please point your attention to the screen. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I say your name. You solemnly swear. You swear. Support and defend. Support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And to bear true faith. And bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. Then I will obey. And I will obey. The orders of. The orders of. The President of the United States. The President of the United States. And the orders of. And the orders of. Those officers, Those officers appointed, over me, appointed over me according to regulations, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The Uniform Code of Military Justice. So, help me God. so help me God.
we celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I. The armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The timing of this holiday is quite deliberate in terms of historical fact. But somehow it always seems quite fitting to me that this day comes deep in autumn when the colors are muted and the days seem to invite contemplation. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise, but most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. In memory of those who gave the last full measure of devotion, may our efforts to achieve lasting peace gain strength. Let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Strengthened by their courage, heartened by their value, and borne by their memory, let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. That was some powerful stuff right there. Thank you, Mr. G. That was really good. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like to introduce the bell ceremony. Uh, the bell ceremony is when a student reads the names of following graduates of Farmersville ISD. Uh, as if you're a student and you're able and, a, and, a, and a, somebody visiting and you're able to stand, uh, please do so. Uh, during that time, at the end, we will close that with the playing of taps. Thank you. World War II, Lieutenant Jack K. Bumpus, Jr., United States Air Corps, Class of 1932. Sergeant Wallace Earl Becknell, United States Air Corps, Class of 1933. Private Landrum W. Leach, United States Army, Class of 1933. Petty Officer Billy Bain Honaker, United States Navy, Class of 1935. Sergeant Nolan D. Thomas, United States Marine Corps, Class of 1935. First Lieutenant Ray W. Hensley, United States Air Corps, Class of 1936. 
Samen Raymond Thomas, United States Navy, Class of 1936. Sergeant Wallen Aston Carver, United States Air Corps, Class of 1937. Technical Sergeant Joe Everett Carver, Jr., United States Air Corps, Class of 1938. Staff Sergeant Mather Parnell Milliken, United States Air Corps, Class of 1938. Private James W. Montgomery, United States Army, Class of 1939. Private Wallace Max Glass, Jr., United States Army, Class of 1940. Staff Sergeant Thomas L. Reich, United States Air Corps, Class of 1940. Private Cleo W. Stanford, United States Air Corps, Class of 1941. Private Horace Edwin Yeary, Jr., United States Army, Class of 1942. Vietnam. Private Thomas Glenn Carraway, United States Army, Class of 1964. Thank you. Please be seated. Before we give our closing remarks, uh, we were reminded that Veterans Day is to support all of the veterans, and we are appreciative of your sacrifices, and we learned that sometimes those sacrifices are time away from family, attending nine or more different schools, living in nearly 20 states, those are real sacrifices. But of course, the ultimate sacrifice is to lay down your life for those you love. Students, I encourage you to sit up straighter than your neighbor. Please help me welcome to the stage Mrs. Billy Goldstein, who represents Wreaths Across America, to talk about those and honoring those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Please welcome Ms. Goldstein. I am your coordinator for Wreaths Across America. I represent the IOOF Lodge 228 here in Farmersville, Texas. We ask that you join us in our mission to remember our veterans who are laid to rest in the IOOF Cemetery, to honor their memory, and to honor their sacrifices and their family sacrifices, and to teach our young people that freedom is not free. I repeat, freedom is not free. What did I just say? Freedom is not, freedom is not free. December the 17th, all across the nation, all across the United States of America, at 11 o'clock our time, Reese will be laid on every veteran's grave that uh, this, that we have sponsors for in the cemeteries, the national cemeteries and the private cemeteries. IOOF Farmersville will be doing it this year. At 11 o'clock, uh, the cemetery is at Sycamore and Wyndham Streets, so be there at 11 o'clock and help us honor our fallen heroes. Thank you.
Today's program serves as a mere token of appreciation to our local heroes and as a reminder that yes, freedom isn't free. To our veterans, thank you for your service. We're proud of your sacrifice and we will live our lives as students and educators and as Americans in such a way as to honor your sacrifice and to show appreciation for the freedoms you have secured and to help continue freedom for generations to come. Students, we will dismiss. You'll go to your second period class to get your belongings and then you will proceed to third period and we will continue our bell schedule for the rest of the day until of course we have our volleyball send off which will be announced uh, at this time. Please give one more round of applause to our veterans. Teachers, please help us dismiss our students. Thank you.
Dakota Fight for the red, white, and blue He was 19 and green With a new M16 Just doing what he had to do He was dropped in the jungle Where the choppers would rumble With the smell of napalm in the air Then the sergeant said Look up ahead Like a dark evil cloud Twelve hundred came 